Here's the top story this morning. A jury has found that Donald Trump did sexually abuse the magazine writer E.J. Carroll in the 1990s. Now, the former president was ordered to pay her $5 million in damages after the jury found his comments calling the accusations a hoax and a lie harmed her reputation. Now, after the verdict, uh, Donald Trump took to his social media, uh, Truth Social, to deny that he even knew the woman. I have absolutely no idea who this woman is. The verdict is a disgrace, a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time. Well, um, you know, for not knowing her, it's cost him a lot of money uh, at the end of the day. I was just looking, they broke it down here uh, as to what it was. Yeah, the sexual assault, he was fined $2.7 million for the battery, another $2 million and defamation, $280,000. That gives a total of, well, practically $5 million. Joining us now from Los Angeles, the attorney. We'd love to hear what you think, Gloria Allred. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Well, it definitely is a victory for E. Jean Carroll. And uh, she alleged that she was raped. And even though the jury did not find in this civil lawsuit that she was, in fact, raped, Instead, finding that she was sexually abused, uh, they also did find that she was defamed. And uh, they found in favor of her to the extent of $5 million in damages, as you have clearly stated. She was certainly helped by that Access Hollywood tape, uh, which was played uh, for the jury and played for Donald Trump in his deposition. The deposition testimony under oath before the trial, and he was asked about that by Ms. Carroll's attorney, and he stood his ground on the Access Hollywood tape and didn't try to get out from under it, basically affirmed that he believed that if you're a star, you know, you can grab a woman by her genital area, and of course he used a pejorative term for that. Uh, so he indicated, yes, he's a star, and uh, and I don't think that helped him with the jury. And then he didn't testify in front of the jury, which he didn't have to do. But that would have been a complete disaster if he had done that, because he can't help but lie. That's what he does. Yeah, well, E. Jean Carroll described the victory as not just for her, but for every woman who has suffered because she was not believed. And that's really been his narrative. He's dismissed it. Uh, he has destroyed her reputation. Uh, and the jury, which was predominantly male, it has to be said, uh, came out and found in her favour. Yes, yes uh, they did. Uh, it was a nine-member jury and uh, they did have to reach a unanimous verdict, and they found in favor of Ms. Carroll and against uh, Mr. Trump. Now, his attorney uh, has taken to the airwaves and said in Mr. Trump's defense, he can't get a fair trial in New York City. Uh, we do know that in the last election, New York went for Biden, not for Trump, uh, who is a New Yorker, by the way, um, um, Mr. Trump. And uh, but nonetheless, I think the, ju the, the, the judge did everything possible to give Mr. Trump, former President Trump, a fair mm -hmm. trial. But he will appeal because that's what Donald Trump does. He's appealed so many times in so many civil lawsuits. And that's what he does. And he goes all the way to the top. And, for example, when he challenged the election results, I think there were something like 40 or 60 lawsuits. He appealed everyone, and he lost every lawsuit. And that's what he does. So okay. good luck to him. We'll see what happens. Um, just, just let's talk about Miss um, Miss Carroll about this. A big win for her, Gloria. But why would she not have instigated a uh, a prosecution, a criminal prosecution, as opposed to this civil prosecution? Well, that's a fair question. And the answer is because it was too late uh, under the law. There's a different statute of limitations, meaning a different time period during which a, a victim of a crime has to file a police report and then for their prosecution to proceed. Too late for her to do it. She indicated in her testimony that she didn't want to call the police. There's no legal requirement that she does. 
And however, she was within the time period to file a civil lawsuit. And that is because a new law was passed last Thanksgiving in New York. And I am a New York lawyer as well as California lawyer. A new law was passed called the Adult Survivors Act, which essentially revived old claims and allowed victims, uh, adult survivors of adult abuse, even from many years ago, to file a lawsuit. She took advantage of that, and that's how she got to court into a trial in her case. She was also helped by the fact that she was able to call what we call two prior bad act witnesses. In other words, two other women who alleged they had also been sexually abused by Mr. Trump, that he had a common scheme, plan, design. In other words, that he sexually abuses women. He grabs their breasts. He grabs other parts of their body without their consent. And I think that helped him. That's also going to be an argument that he makes on appeal that they should not have been allowed to testify. I mean, it seems to me as as an observer in another country that they should be given damages as well as E. Jean Carroll. Um, But, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, Just give us some of the legal context, not just this case. You've talked about the numerous legal cases that Trump has seen, but the context of this arraignment that he recently has had in relation to the porn star. Uh, The timing of all of this as he's trying to get the Republican nomination. There's lots of talk about whether that affects his politics. I don't want to ask you about that. But there are these other cases going on. Yes, the New York City prosecution, which you just rightly mentioned, where he has been indicted, he's pled not guilty, and uh, that case is likely to come to trial next year. Then he's also facing a a big investigation uh, by the uh, special counsel of Justice Department uh, into uh, an allegation of obstruction of justice. Hasn't been indicted yet, maybe it never will be, but likely in my opinion, will be, uh, for uh, not turning over documents, top secret documents, classified documents, even after they were subpoenaed. That's one case. And then, of course, there's the January 6th investigation into the insurrection in Washington, D.C. That's a Justice Department investigation by special counsel. And that is heating up as well. There's the case in Georgia, which is a state case in which he is being uh, investigated, may be indicted this summer uh, for uh, election interference in Georgia. So he's in a world of hurt. He's got a lot going on. It may or may not affect him politically. Right now, he's ahead for the Republican nomination for president for the next time. But uh, there's going to be quite a bit that's co- that he's going to have to face uh, before even the primary happens. Okay. Gloria, I mean, you're just reciting uh, those cases that are lined up. I mean, my uh, limited experience, thankfully limited in a courtroom, uh, I've just found draining. I find it an awful experience. Uh, the fact that this man would contemplate running uh, the most powerful country in the world and fighting all these court cases, it must be, te- it must be I don't know how he, he would find time to just undertake the mundane things in his life, never mind be president. Well, yes, you could say that. But on the other hand, he's actually exploiting the fact that he is being investigated, that he is being indicted, that, in fact, uh, he may face these other charges as well. And he is raising money. It's a big, what we call a griff. He is raising money, millions of dollars, calling himself a victim. It's a witch hunt and all of the other phrases that he uses time and again. And he's raising that after, you know, essentially, for example, on the January 6th case, based on the big lie that he really was elected, that Biden is not the elected president, which absolutely he is. And by the way, his fundraising off of poor people who believe in him is being investigated also by the special counsel. There's always the possibility that he may end up being, you know, charged for what he is doing based on what he should know is the big lie because he's been told that by a number of his own attorneys.
Um, Gloria, finally, just one other legal question. Just explain to us in the UK where this is not possible, how in the States he could still run for president from behind bars if that were to happen. Well, again, a great question. And the answer is, in our history in the United States, there is actually someone who was convicted of a felony who still ran for president of the United States. His name was Eugene Debs. And that was many years ago. He was in a jail cell serving time for the conviction of a felony. And still he could run for president of the United States. So we'll have to see what happens mm -hmm. if, Gloria, if Trump is convicted. I wouldn't be surprised if he would do the same. God. Gloria, thank you for your, your insight. Uh, really fascinating and always very good talking to you. Uh, we've got to say goodbye to you there. And thank you very much indeed thank for you. all of that this morning. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. My pleasure. And that's Gloria Allred. Um, she's an attorney um, and uh, giving us the whole take on Donald Trump. There, there was a picture of his wife, uh, Melania, there, who we don't see too much mm. of these days. But that must be a big strain on her for her husband to be accused and found guilty of sexual assault. Um, in, in this by case. any normal measure, you would think so. But, I mean, he has not been far from these sorts of allegations for the entirety of the time he's been in the public eye. I mean, those uh, Access Hollywood tapes were around before he became president. She must be used to hearing all of these, this sort of talk, especially if that is the way he talks openly. So, you know, maybe she just doesn't mind.